Hello, hello. Let's try and do a couple more videos this week. Today, what's on my mind is logistics. I'm going to run here, but, uh, and I think I'm probably going to go down to the office for a few hours, try and get some things done. Sharon's back home, so I may stay home. Uh, she's not going to do school, but she needs to get a bunch of stuff done for her MSBW stuff. So I might stay here so that, that she has the freedom to do that stuff. But anyway, logistics. How many of you have ever moved across the country? We've done it once. And I'll explain, let's see if I can find some pictures and I can kind of explain how it went that time and what we're looking at this time. Run is complete. Now it's going to go do some errands. Look, yesterday, Sharon backed the Tahoe in and I had to come get something out and this door was open and I came around the front and the door was open enough that I couldn't get by and I fell in the snow. So that's the edge of our driveway or parking area, whatever, and I fell off in the snow. Anyway, so logistics of moving. Well, when we moved out here, it was 16 years ago, just me and Sharon, young, in our 20s, um, and we sold almost everything we owned there in North Carolina, our house everything and moved out here you know we were young enough to just make things work we didn't have to worry about anything going back is a little more complicated um yeah <laughs> we've got kids we've got things that we've uh we've collected and there's not a market here to really sell everything that we have uh and then recoup the cost to move down there um but some of the things are things that we've worked hard to to gather, like our little secretary, uh, where we keep our knickknacks and our kitchen table or our dining room table, things like that that are special to us that we want to keep. And uh, of course, we have two extra people and all their stuff and their toys uh, and from their bedroom. And so we're trying to figure out the logistics of doing that. So we moved out here for under a thousand dollars. But today I've looked at a couple of um, I've gotten a couple quotes. Most moving companies, when I put in our two zip codes, they say, we don't serve your area. Nobody serves in Jordan. I did get one company called uh, All Coast Moving or something like that. They gave me a quote and it's right at $5,000. Um, and then I got a, uh, a quote for U-Haul and to rent a 26 foot U-Haul um, to drive across the country there from our zip code to their zip code picking it up in Billings uh, is about $3,000. So by the time we put in gas money to drive across, um, rentals of, you know, things to, to package our stuff with, like the, we don't need boxes, but we need like the, the furniture covers, stuff like that. Um, so we're still looking at, you know, three to $5,000 um, total. That doesn't count. <laughs> Uh, I have to figure out how to pack up my Bible collection. Mm. Okay, so scratch that. I just got off the phone with that company. Hang on. I just got off the phone with that company, and that was just a generic um, response that they gave um, based on, I guess, just generalities. But after I talked to him for a little bit, he was he said high quote is from seven to ten thousand. Uh, for that moving company to do it so wow um, yeah but now as I'm standing here looking at these books I've got to go through my um, commentaries and decide what I'm gonna take what I'm not gonna take um, or what just needs to be donated somewhere else I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my Bible collection so you know I've showed you guys my Bible collection before um, and for the most part, just packing like books is okay. But I've got some of these that are that are premium Bibles that I got to try and get back in their boxes and and figure out what to do with that. I would like a better place to display that, also. 
So the secretary that I'm talking about is this one right here. We bought it uh, after it gotten refurbished and we keep all of our little knickknacks in there. I've cleaned a lot of it out. The guy asked, how many boxes? And I'm like, I have no clue. He's like, a hundred? I'm like, sure, sounds good. And then he said, are you gonna pack it and just want us to take your furniture apart and load and then unload? Or do you want us to come in and pack everything? And I'm like, my wife is particular. And so boxes will be done and we'll just need to do furniture. So we've decided we're not taking this couch or my chair, um, but we do have a couch and a table and entertainment center, a lot of our stuff. The shelves I built. Yeah, it's good for games and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we, we do have some stuff none of thankfully though the uh the appliances are not ours we don't have to worry about uh, those beds come apart small. our bed is a sleep small. number bed it comes a uh, comes apart and is is pretty small um the the stuff upstairs like one of those i don't think we should take either of the boys's dressers uh, i'm okay with that because so elijah's room here Alexa, stop music. So we do have a table, school stuff, and then all of his toys and stuff. This bed is not going. That actually, we found it in the attic of the garage. Um, but then his dresser and a cabinet for toys. And there's CDs in it. There's CDs in it. And then Jeremiah's room is a disaster right now, but this little blue one and we got we will take his bed we bought this for him when we moved into this house so we have quite a bit of stuff to move but when we were at fruitland uh we were sitting at home one day and a lady uh, who was walking with her sister collapsed and her sister ran to our house and got us and I started CPR on her. That started a relationship with her family. She ended up passing away, but one of the things that she did was all these scrapbooks. So when we were at the hospital, her husband was sharing all these scrapbooks that she made. So Sharon decided that was a great idea and wanted to start making scrapbooks and we have lots of them. This is the one that covers our trip moving to Jordan. Yesterday I talked about the logistics of the move and we're still uh, waiting on a couple quotes, but for the most part it looks like right now the U-Haul is going to be our best option. Um, but one of the other things that we are really praying about, and, and uh, if you pray for us, I really appreciate that, but the biggest thing right now on our plate is housing. Um, we owned a house in North Carolina when I was a deputy, Sharon was a 911 dispatcher, and we sold that house. Um, didn't make any money on it because uh, we only owned it for about two years, so there was no equity in it, but we, we sold it and we lived in a parsonage now for 16 years. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on the pros and cons of a parsonage for a small town church. Uh, I'm still a believer that small that churches in in this church's situation here in Jordan, uh, a parsonage is the best way to go. But I have a new view, uh, a, a, a new perspective um, from a pastor who's been here a long time. Uh, as you as you leave, and this has always been one of the arguments, and and one of the things that pastors have said is that you. Uh, you live there for so long, you pour your life into that ministry there. You're there for 
10, 20, 30 years or whatever, and when you leave, you have no equity, none. Now, there are some guys who have been able to maybe set aside housing allowance and, and have a little nest egg to, to put as a down payment, uh, but we survive here. Um, there, there is no savings. I have been able to put a little bit back in retirement um, in Guidestone, but that's that's it. So we're leaving here with no equity. We can't sell a house to put a down payment down. Uh, we don't have a savings to put a down payment down. And um, the housing market is crazy. And so I'm praying for a miracle. That's what I'm doing. So I mentioned trying to figure out my Bibles and go through my commentaries of what I want to keep. Um, I've decided what I'm going to do is I have one complete set of good commentaries. One that's the, it's through the Bible with J. Vernon McGee, which I like. And then I have a Broadman Bible commentary, which I want to keep. That's a full set. And I've started collecting these other commentaries that I really like that I'm going to start doing. The rest of them I'm going to leave here, the partial sets, whatever. Um, but that's not my real logistical problem here. My real logistical problem is my other books. I've got all these books and they're going to take up quite a few boxes. And as you know, books are heavy. So I've got to go through that. The other problem that I'm recognizing is uh, after 16 years, it's hard to remember what is the church's and what is mine. And without getting super picky about who paid for what or who gave what to who, um, you know, there's, there's all that type of stuff. I mean, so for example, if there's books that I bought for myself or if they're books the church bought, or Bible studies that the church bought, trying to figure out what that is, um, things that I bought specifically for this office, and I don't know how it'll transfer. It's like my double screen. Um, this uh, file cabinet I bought to keep up with all my sermons. Uh, by the way, look at this. This is my old sermon drawer when I used to type out all my sermons. And so I have stacks and stacks of sermons, series, color-coded, how I used to, that's 16 years of, well, not quite 16 years because I started doing it all electronic, but I used to type them all out. Those are my notes. Um, not sure what to do with all of those. I will probably uh, not haul those <laughs> all the way to North Carolina. What, bud? Can I play with this? Sure. Obviously, the desk and chair and all that stuff stays here because that's the churches. But a lot of this stuff, I got to figure out what to do with. <laughs> oh boy, there's a lot of logistics to go through to move across the country. Well, I've recorded a, some thoughts for the last couple of days about logistics. Um, some good news: we're getting some uh, interest in partnerships with us, and so that is exciting. Um, so with that, I'll leave you. I'll post another video later this week, I hope. And we'll see you later. What are you laughing at? <laughs> what? You're just like reaching really high trying to do stuff. Like yeah, he's playing uh, Job Simulator, and there's things he has to reach in there that are like for adult size. Oh. It's so just hilarious to watch. There's got to be a way to change the settings so that you can do it for somebody who's vertically challenged or somebody who is a little person. Yeah. I could reach all of them. Hey, see you guys later.